Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the Ultimate Guard Cup. It has been quite a while since we've seen the last oh, yes. Sky Striker mirror match. <laughs> My name is Leonard König and I'm of course here as always with Sebastian Lemke. Hello Leonard, it's so nice to be back with you. Yes. It feels like forever that we have casted a match in the Ultimate Guard Cup. Indeed, and it wouldn't be a Card Sports League stream if we didn't have a delay. Um, this time we're a bit more strict than the last time. Yes. Uh, so there were already two Tartanus penalties. Uh, game losses have been issued. Correct, correct. Already. Correct. So um, LCG has two one O's already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just uh, quickly already tell the people who's playing. It's uh, Legacy yeah. Card Gaming versus Alpha Trading Card Games. And as you mentioned, uh, Legacy Card Gaming is leading in two games with one O already because uh, two players of Alpha Trading Card Games haven't shown up yet. But that doesn't hinder us from showing you the one match that is already complete in terms of players. So I would say everybody has been waiting a while for the second season of the Ultimate Card Cup. Wait a second! Oh, Basti, what not is up? yet. <laughs> what is up? Our judge just told me that the players have trouble hosting a match. Oh yeah, cool. And I, like, I love, this is not an official Konami stream, so I can happily insult everyone. Um, <laughs> How could yes. it be that, <laughs> that players are playing on Dueling Book all the time, <laughs> but I... then they can't host a match as soon as they enter the Ultimate Guard Cup? But the players are there. Um, we can see. Okay, so it is indeed Jan Hausmann who's playing. Yes, it is. Did you find him already? Jan. Yeah. Okay, wait, um, me, not yet. Let's see. Oh yeah, I, I have him, I have him. And now we have that real special password this time. Good luck cracking this one, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not gonna happen. Definitely not. Yes, I'm in. You are too, and I think All our right. judges yes. as well. So, without any further ado, Let's just quickly jump into the match, right? And yep, let's indeed. watch some Yu-Gi-Oh! on a Thursday evening as we are used to it. So, switching over to the playing field, we see some nice sleeves there by um, Stefanos Fossieris, who's playing versus Jan Hausmann. And they're having a battle of rock, paper, scissors already. That's the first one. <laughs> the first battle of the evening. Or let's say the second battle of the evening, because it seems to be quite a battle to, to connect to our Discord server so far. Yep, indeed. But now okay. we have a match going. It is a chilly Yu-Gi-Oh! Thursday evening time again, right? Just tuning in, watching some good Yu-Gi-Oh! And Young won the die roll, or the Rock, Paper, Scissors game, and is able to start off with his Octopus <laughs> combos. And that's yes. a good way to start off. <laughs> Special summoning the good old Aqua Dolphin from his hand, and he started with jamming waves as well. Oof, that's like a pretty bricky hand when you start like all these cards. When you start jamming waves going first, you start both the connector and the Aqua Dolphin going first. Like, oh, okay. So I mean, it, it, it could be worse, right? He could not have combo, and as he discards yes. Silcoitus, uh, he's probably not facing any kind of hand traps. I mean, Ultra Guys Maybe is not the matchup. Right? Maybe Impermanence, right? Yeah, Ultra so. Guys is not the matchup that you want to uh, face. Yeah, that's Necessarily. True. I would I would be rooting for Impermanence Faker now. I mean, the chances of that happening with only one multi-faker in the deck are like insanely low. Yeah, oh, I that's true. Stefanos is happily pulling it off if he has it in hand. But like, it's kind of... Would you actually activate the Impermanence on the uh, new space from connector maybe because then you're saving your circles from being discarded probably yes right no not really i mean you don't really care about your circoidus circoidus is actually not the best card anyways but uh you're rather trying to stop the orcus combo i think yeah i probably agree you are probably right on that and there's galatea hitting the board so uh, Jan decided to play Orcus today. What do you think about Orcus? Like, 
it has been a whole lot of shifting in the meta game now from last Thursday on because the Megatins are now available to everybody. And that means that we have Nibiru, Z Rock available, and we also have uh, Dark Ruler no more. Two very, very impactful cards. And uh, it seems like Orcus can handle both of these cards kind of well, right? Yep, indeed. You can play around uh, Dingirsu, uh, uh, Nibiru quite easily. Around Dingirsu, you shouldn't play because that's kind of your key card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, I think, I think actually, actually Dingirsu is the best card in the game right now, honestly. It's, it's so hard to insane. out it, right? It's just yeah. insane. You just leave it on the field. Um, so I'm, I'm quite a bit uh, distracted right here because there are so many questions about uh, the players being too late. Mm -hmm. um, like the the Al alpha card gaming, right? Yeah, alpha, alpha, alpha trading, trading card, card games, games exactly. has still not arrived. We only have the uh, Stefano mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or Stefanos, um, and we have issued a match loss now. Hmm, that is cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano's just playing for the glory here. <laughs> yeah. And he has to watch some Orcus combos while doing that. <laughs> Indeed. And we will see if he can play through it. Like, if, if your opponent doesn't draw the nuts, uh, your matchup is really good as the Alter Geist player. But seeing that Silcoidus has been discarded, I think there won't be like a threat of a Mellow Seek or something else. Um, really unlikely. Faker Hot Draw. Could be possible. Oh, that's a good way oh. to start it off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if your opponent negates it, he has nothing left. Oh, yes, Ash. Oh, the Ash that's Blossom. So okay, good. Ash, Ash so Blossom. Good. I wanted to say that as well. If you if you have Ash Blossom, then you have a chance of playing through extra oh, against. Oh, he has oh, from the well. top. I mean, he will have to negate that. Otherwise, he's yeah. just sending away the Galatea or more likely the set card. Yep, there is the negate. Also, Crescendo, the negation card in the game right now, that banishes the card being negated. That's pretty impactful when you negate a Metal Seek. Yep, indeed. And just back row from now on for the Alter Geist player. But maybe there's a spoofing amongst it that could help him. Yeah, imagine spoofing and manifestation. Oh, yeah, that would be. Manifestation tasty, would be pretty tasty. hot right now. Absolutely. And I mean, what is the setup for Jan? Let's just quickly look through his graveyard. He has no oh, Orcus cards in his, com in his graveyard. Oh, yeah. That's actually pretty good for him because, as I said, Jan misses Orcus cards in his graveyard. So he has to get something going. I mean, he has Crescendo, so he can search for Harp Horror. Okay, then he has a Norman Summon. Maybe can link away his Galatea for something else. Getting into the Harp Horror in the graveyard, but... I mean, as we see, as Sir Curtis now, and he can just bounce the Dingirsu, maybe? I mean, maybe he bounces the Galatea. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's better, that's because what otherwise he just puts <laughs> the skeleton into the graveyard for Jan. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, Jan can just activate Crescendo and search for Harp Horror, and then make another Galatea with <laughs> Dingirsu. Oh, yes, or hard just <laughs> Harp Horror. That will work as well. Yeah. But, I mean, just imagine... The set card being Crackdown in this situation, for example. Just having Crackdown, taking control of the Dingirsu, that would have been huge. Yep, indeed. But then again, oh no, the spoofing is there. Yeah, Crackdown would have been actually insane. Yeah, That's right. But uh, maybe it's like a Solemn Strike so that he can stop the skeleton that tries to summon the Dingirsu. Would be good as um. well, for sure. So let's see. It must be something that <laughs> that is useful. What about... Uh, compulsory evacuation device that could be helpful too but maybe he would have triggered that already I think he could I don't when, know I think when he normal summons the, the harp horror you could actually bounce sitting gear so then maybe okay then he yeah. has skeleton again so... or he could just bounce the harp horror again yeah that that's true as well yeah right that's even better because then he cannot really do anything with sitting gear so he can run over the silk but for next turn, then you're ready to play. Yeah, that would have been good. But I guess he has none of that because he didn't activate anything yet. Does he play any battle traps like in the good old days? I don't think so, right? Oh, I, I can check that. Um, it's player B. 
I was pretty sure that I saw Crackdown in his list, and I think in the in the new format it now makes sense to play Crackdown. At the end of the last format for, for yeah, Euros indeed. or so, I was I wasn't really I wasn't too satisfied with Crackdown in the Alter Guys deck, but at the moment it seems like a very good pick. It makes perfect sense to play Crackdown at the moment, especially because it also outs out Stingirsu in some way. At least it doesn't put materials into the graveyard and so on. Yeah, so, and you can protect all your traps from Twin Twisters. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Wait, if, if your opponent Twin Twisters your cards and you chain Crackdown to take it in Gears, you can protect, right? Um, You should be able to, yeah. yeah because the protection effect doesn't activate, right? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely insane. So there is Stingirsu coming back now. And do you equip with Dengisu now and are happy to just play through what's left there, or do you want to send away the scare, mm. scary back row card? I think. Is he sending away this silk card? That is. That looks odd to me. Yeah, because you can just normal summon Marionetta <laughs> and uh, set a, a manifestation. Um, hmm. I mean, okay, so he is going to summon Borrels. So, ah, okay. Okay, that makes more sense. But indeed, does he have a way to summon another monster? Uh, he should have the nightmare effect to send uh, the world wand and then summon the harp horror, which should be seven thousand seven hundred damage. Oh, that indeed looks true. <laughs> Jan does his thing where he always just uh, <laughs> takes takes end. a card to his hand yeah. and then sends it to the graveyard. I mean, not if there's a button that says to the graveyard, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Okay, so looks like Jan figured out the back row isn't scary at all. Yeah. Stefanos would have activated it before, and that decision was absolutely correct. Jan figured that out correctly, and uh, it is 1 0 for Jan Hausmann in this glory game free featured match of the Ultimate <laughs> God Cup op opening match. In case you I'm, tuned in, like. I mean, you were. Yeah. Go ahead. We're happy it's not a Sky Striker mirror match that is dragging out everything. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That would be insane. <laughs> greetings to Pascal Keem, who just yeah, did that just greetings twice, to Pascal twice, twice. I mean, his team won the whole tournament. Uh, in case you, you missed the last season, uh, Team 7 Sands managed to win the whole thing in the end. Yeah, which... But he's not on the team anymore, right? That's true. He, he and Dinkabui left the team, so they won't be able to defend the title with Team 7 Sands, but... Team 7 stands still in the cup, so their former teammates will be able to defend it. And yeah, I think Legacy Card Gaming went kind of far in the last round as well. I think they got out in top 8 or top 4. Do you remember? I think maybe even top 16 versus Team E-Man, but it could also be top 8. I think it was top Indeed. <laughs> yeah, but nicely we are again live and we saw... Uh, that Stefanos opened with uh, Marionetta, Jan answered that with his impermanence, but Stefanos still had... Oh yeah, and he also had a Pot of Extravagance, as you can see in his graveyard, and Pot of Duality. So, four more back row, back row cards for Stefanos, so <laughs> still a lot to play through for Jan there. Yeah, I mean, if he ha if he finds, like, the, the good, good side deck cards, like Pancratops or Twin Twisters, I don't know if he even plays that stuff. Let's see what his side deck is. Uh, Twin Twisters and Pancratops indeed. No other spell trap removal cards. Mm, interesting. But I mean he has jamming waves so... True, um... he main decks jamming waves. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, maybe we should explain uh, to the people the new ruling about uh, when the team is changing their player after they already committed to the three players that are playing on Thursday. Actually, uh, Team Legacy Card Gaming was telling us that uh, Chantari will be playing in place of Jan Hausmann. So Chantari was on the roster for this Thursday. But today they said, okay, Chantari is not playing, Jan Hausmann is playing. But with our new new rules, that means that Jan Hausmann will have to play the exact list that Chantari submitted. So Jan Hausmann right now is playing with a list of Chantari, so maybe he has some problems and he does not even know the deck super well. Oh wait, I should tell our judge that they can continue. Oh, <laughs> I was wondering, like, Jan is a pretty good player, why is he taking so long to figure out a move here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. Yeah, I mean, in the meantime, we can actually answer the question of Infernity Launcher in the chat, who's asking, 
It is like an online dwelling book tournament series and indeed it is the ultimate god cup. We are from this series on we will be live every Thursday and Tuesday. And uh, so it is a top 32 bracket, but it's also a double elimination bracket. And uh, yeah, we are playing through and the winner gets some cool ultimate guard prizes and also some card market vouchers, I think. I hope that kind of answered your question, Infernity Launcher. And I we, hope so too. <laughs> we talked about uh, gemming waves and Jan Hausmann immediately activated gemming waves and that was rivalry. Rivalry would have been pretty good versus Orcus actually. Ah, oh, this is such a trouble. <laughs> I'm just constantly texting people because of the penalties that I issued. Ah, who are you texting? So? Um, I think four people at once right oh. now. Uh, but that's none of the uh, stream's viewers' business. So uh, <laughs> let let's see what he is going to do with his Vishuda. Like Vishuda is crazy to play through bots. It's not only a free it's special so summon that which is pretty good in Arcus, but it's also oh a nice Ooh. nice summon strike. Um, but it's also back row removal. Imagine mm -hmm. him having drones now. Like drones and then he could still activate the Vishuda effect. Oh, that would be insane. Yeah, you're right. I was wondering whether that would be better to strike the Vishuda, but it's probably not. Probably it is better the way Stefanos decided to go there. So instant fusion, paying a thousand life points. Special summoning, what is the card he's special summoning there? Probably, yeah, Thousand Eyes Restrict. Yeah. Oh, or not. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, he probably wasn't familiar with the function of moving the card to another zone that Dwelling Book offers. Oh, and he's spoofing as well. That That is pretty, yeah. pretty neat. That's pretty much ideal. Uh... And then he can now summon the Faker summon the circuitous as well and you can just chill on it basically because Jan has to summon a second monster to actually get into some way some way of a combo yeah and then uh even then he can still chill if it's not an yeah. orcus card the, the biggest problem is that he cannot even attack uh over a multi faker to bait the bounce before oh that's a good normal sign. Uh, because a thousand ice restrict denies that right yeah you yeah. cannot attack with other monsters that's true. And that Cantina is actually very, very good. Oh, and he has Solemn for that. Wow. Well, why, why, why would they... Con okay, yeah, Cantina <laughs> would be good to, to get rid of the Solemn. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a pretty good Solemn Judgment there. That is Z1-1. So Stefano still fighting for his team. Yeah. They are, they are already down 2-0, but he's still willing to show us his deck, his other guy's deck, and... How do you like Altergeist in general for the upcoming format? Do you think it's a contender for YC's Ghent? Yes, it, it really is. The deck is somehow really consistent. Like, it feels it's more consistent than before. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, and because the power level of all the other decks is lowered so hard, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Altergeist is crazy. I mean, it could grind with the decks before. Mm -hmm. Not it, it didn't always, like, outgrind the other decks, but... Did a pretty good job at contesting them. Absolutely. And now, like the, the power of, of the, for example, Salomon Great. It was a really grinding matchup. It was amazing. Um, usually, like a small advantage could always decide how the game turns out. Yes. And now Salomon Great is lacking so many resources. They barely ever start with Circle, which is really important. And <laughs> to me, it feels most... like they're always oh, starting with Circle yeah, okay. against me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. But the most important part is as soon as your Xel is out once, yeah. you cannot summon it with another Stalio. So getting your Stalio going does not mean that you can uh, access your Xel again. Yeah. And I think it's kind of interesting. At the beginning, everybody was saying, yeah, we just play Zangan now to get more multi-fakers in the end. But the latest lists I saw were not really playing Zangan anymore. Like, uh, they decided it's not really necessary anymore. We'd rather play Phantasme, for example, because Phantasme obviously can draw more cards and get you into Metal Seek and multi-faker too, get you into spoofing. And... Uh, I think that card is just way better in general. Like, Phantasma is just better than Zangon. 
And Zangan always felt kind of bad to me. I was like, yeah, it is okay to do it, but I'm not really a fan of Zangan at yeah, all. It's, al it's also not really good to draw it after turn one, right? Yes, 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 exactly. And you don't want to play too many normal summons as well. Yeah. <sighs> Fantasmish just feels way better in general. And uh, yeah, the thing about the format is there are so many decks available at the moment. You can just yeah. play basically everything. And if you're good at it, you have a very, very good chance of, of topping or, or winning something yeah. with it. That's that's why I hate Phantasmay, by the way. Uh, <laughs> all the all the decks are good right now. You can play basically everything. And this is why you're going to face like at least one or two Ultra Guys, Sky Striker, Dracos, or Where Phantasmay Gurus. is just dead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's the Ash on Mermaid. That yeah, and if you very, discard very good. Skeleton, that's that's uh, not a good sign. Like, he also Normal Summon the Candina. Normal Summon is out. And he, he does did, not play Dangerous, didn't, right? He didn't search with the Candina, too. I think he has oh. the Corobane in hand as well. Ouch. I mean, then he should have chained the Corobane to the Vishuda. Unless he wants to keep it, of course. Oh, wait, you can't chain it. That was drones that you can chain. That's not a quick effect. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so that's a very good start for Stefanos. <laughs> that lonely mermaid sitting there on the side of Jan. He can't be too happy with that. But the good thing no. about mermaid is his opponent cannot just normal summon Mellow Seek and attack directly because Mellow Seek would be at zero attack. Yeah, but he can normal summon Marionetta. <laughs> oh, he can special yeah. Pancratops too. <laughs> yeah, Pancratops uh, hurts. Oh, but he has no Norman summon, probably. Because he would have <laughs> summoned a monster he, if he would have had one. And he might just need to uh, remove the light stage with the Pancratops, so this pop could actually just be used for a light stage that really doesn't do anything anymore. Yeah, depends I mean, on unless what he can chain the cards, right? Yeah, exactly. If yeah. it's spoofing or so, it's not really necessary. And then the pop could be really impactful. And he has to have spoofing because he's an Ultra Guys player, so he always <laughs> has the access to the multi-faker. Right, right. Okay, so it looks like he's targeting the left card yeah. with it. Maybe I... the, the pop is too important, though. Maybe you just want to keep it. Oh, he goes end phase. That's insane. Oh, yeah. That's not really good. That's not what you want to see. Like, I, I don't know how you always draw skeleton with, uh, yeah. with Orcus. Like, oh, you have so solid. many. Ooh. He hit a good card there. And of course, um, Stefanos decides to keep the judgment. Oh, and he drew into Marionetta. Wow. That is very, very, very good. That could be the decider. If that wasn't decided already, the Marionetta will help there. And now we saw in, in game two, he actually dropped the impermanence on the Marionetta turn one, where it is pretty good, but. Now there's the danger of Stefanos already having protocol set, and when he now activates the impermanence, um, he could just chain protocol, and that would be very bad because the impermanence would be wasted. But on the other hand, he, he has uh, light stage on the field, so he couldn't even activate the impermanence from his hand. Impermanence in his hand would be dead at the moment. Okay, so... Infernity launch here. Um, yeah, just check out cardsportsleague.com and there are the rules explained to everybody for the Ultimate God Cup. And there's, on the one hand, the Ultimate God Cup, which is a closed online tournament for teams and you can apply for it and you already had to apply with your whole team to get into the tournament. So application is already um, closed. I'm sorry, Alpha TCG in the chat, uh, we answered to your players in the Discord and why did not did you not contact us in time if you had trouble connecting with the Discord. Um, we are going to talk about that after the game for now we are continuing the show. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so there comes Korobane. He had that hard draw as we suspected. And he also has Aquadolf. And then he's not even trying to activate it. There is Galatea. Can he he cannot summon Galatea with no. Nope. Robane and Aquadolphin. <laughs> okay, so that's Absolutely what he realized not. too as well. Absolutely not. Okay, so... Galatea would be pretty good if it was a generic Link monster, honestly. <laughs> yeah, um, people will start to realize that Dengisu actually is, the, <laughs> is a, a generic Exceed monster. I think that's pretty, pretty insane. 
Oh, he has come pulled too. That's not looking good for Jan. What, nope, what deck did actually Link's, uh, like, exceed summoned in Gears? I was wondering, was it the Grand Ma Major deck? Yeah, it was the Grand Major deck with yeah. the uh, Thunderbirds and the yeah. Bigfoots. Oh, yeah. And, and Hexatrude. And Hexatrude, exactly. That's actually the English name for it as well, right? Yeah. Hexatrude. <laughs> okay. Well, and even though... Alterguys is breaking, they seem to take this game, just attack. And, like, what kind of battle trap could you expect? Impermanence yeah, impermanence is not going to do the trick. Isn't really doing anything. So that's probably Jan's way of telling Stefanos yeah. that he won this okay. match. All right. So let's quickly jump over to our faces right here. Yes. Have him big on the screen as you like it, guys. And, um, yeah. So let's maybe talk about that a little more because... In the last season, as you, as you as a viewer probably realized, we had a lot of issues with people being late to our yeah. appointments. So um, we had to start late all the time, basically, and that was really disappointing for us as the as the streaming team because we were never starting in time and we were getting the piss from everybody telling us, "No, why can't you start in time? We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting." And it was also not really satisfying for the players that were waiting for the opponents because they had to wait for like half an hour and they were telling us, yeah, we have to do other things as well. Like we have family, we have stuff to do, whatever. Yeah. And uh, so we decided to actually be more strict with uh, penalties on tardiness for this season because uh, it is a very, very prestigious event and we have yeah, and, prizes and to win. So also, why not be Also, um, we had issues with players who couldn't... Uh, attend in time because uh, of our fault because we had problems like conveying the links to the discord and stuff to them but they did not contact us in time and if you are having issues connecting to the discord or whatever if one link doesn't work then please contact us so we can fix it in time like you had one player the stefanos who was there in time <laughs> that's the odd thing about it yeah when yeah. one of your guys can join the discord channel there must be something wrong like <laughs> that does not seem to be a general problem i guess <laughs> yep like he should be able to convey to you that you should get online and if you can't get online in time because of problems that we caused but the stream hasn't even started yet then please tell us so we can actually have a delay and not just wait 30 minutes until after the stream has started, so we can figure out why you guys are late. Yep, but I think uh, that should be enough of uh, the <laughs> the teacher talk for now. Like, uh, yeah, we shouldn't really uh, talk about that anymore. We have a winner for our opening match of the second season, yeah, which is indeed. Legacy Card Gaming, and uh, Paul Goes and Tom Kleinengraber did not have to play for the win, but they did win 2-0 and. Uh, Stefanos Fosteris uh, kept the glory up for Alpha Trading Card Games and won his match versus Jan Hausmann with Altergeist. So apparently Altergeist, as we talked about it a little, is a very valid pick for the upcoming format. And um, I'm like so hyped to see the top cards for Ghent. Like I, I cannot imagine how many decks there will be in the top card, how, how many different decks, because I would say we would see at least 10 different decks, at least. In the top card, like in the top 32, what do you think? Do, just just say yeah, a I mean, number, I mean, have, how, how many different seen, decks? We have seen Portland, right? Portland was crazy yeah, full oh, of different absolutely. decks, but they didn't even have Nibiru. Yeah. So maybe even less combo, but maybe maybe this is also why there are less decks, you know. Does, does that make sense? Like control decks are much stronger, and because control decks are usually more the more consistent way to win games, because you do not rely on the die roll so much, then the, the stronger control decks should beat the other decks more consistently. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Like, like Striker always wins versus Guru, or always won versus yeah, Guru. I that mean, now oh, they the are pretty fragile. Uh, okay, so, anyways, I think we're going to close this off. We are discussing with you guys if you get another chance to play, if we are yeah. recording something at okay. once. There's no, no reason to freak out now. We're going to figure it out yes. and... And maybe let's talk a bit, little bit more about the Discord because for this season we actually uh, updated our Discord 
to make our subscription more uh, or better for you guys. So you actually should use your Twitch Prime sub to subscribe to the Card Sports League channel because then you get access to our Discord channel. And on the Discord channel, we will post the deck lists of the players that play today and play every single week. So you can just check the deck list from the cup there. And also, uh, we will have uh, meetings with the players there or with us as the car says. So you can, if you're a member of the Discord yeah. and a subscriber, you can talk to us or talk to the winners and so on. And uh, yeah, we will tell you when that is happening, but that will be happening. And then we can have a little chit chat about uh, what was happening, what is the point of the formal at the moment. Like stuff we talk about together here on stream, you can then talk with us about that off stream and ask us questions and whatever. If, if, you, if you think we can give you good answers, just ask us questions there. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's it for now, right? Yeah, indeed. So guys, make sure to subscribe to our channel and make yeah. sure to tune in on Tuesday as well. On Tuesday, we will have Eternity Card Gaming versus... Is it already Yugi? next week on Tuesday? Oh, I... I, I think we're starting so. with the, um, like, like the, the, the lucky loser round, what's it called? Like, we're playing double elimination this season. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, we I, we're, we can't give you the information right now. So, um, let's just wait for further Facebook or Instagram posts. Yeah, just keep, and uh, keep your see eyes you next open. week. Uh, next week for sure. So, guys, bye-bye.